I don't like drafting a halfback in the first round. The guard position weak on our team has been weak for a couple years now. And this is one of my surprise picks. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Dropout Sports War today. We got something new. You might see some college sports going around here in this channel, but today we're going full NFL. We're going with a Bills mock draft with uh, three of my friends here. We got Tyler, Nate, and Mike. Say what's up, y'all. What's up, guys? Uh, yeah, and, and today all of us are going to be picking for the Buffalo Bills seven rounds from, from first to last. Guys, do you have anything else to say before we get into it, or do you just want to get rolling? No, well, Bill. Ready. All right, here all we right. go, here we go. Who are you guys optimally looking to get here at 25? Personally, because I mean, look at the corners. So personally, I feel like I'd rather not go corner just because unless we trade up, which I still think they should do is trade up to get one of the higher end corners. But I personally would probably take a running back here just because I feel like that's something we need. I'm with you on that, Gary. I mean, at this point, there's only Kair Lam and Kyler Gordon. Perry. So I think, you know, any of those guys you can get in the second round. And if you don't take Brees Hall here, there's a chance that he'll go early in the second round. I think a lot of those guys will at least, you know, Roger McCreary is someone I really like. And I think we can grab him, you know, anywhere in the second round. So I agree. Also, though, I don't know if you can uh, switch it to the interior offensive line. Zion Johnson, he can be a good guard for us because obviously the guard position's weak on our team it's been weak for a couple years now and zion johnson he has potential to be good so i agree with the running back 100 percent. but if he's on the board he could he could be a solid starter who what would you say is the number one number one concern just do you think the number one concern is corner yeah yeah i would say but i just feel like all the corners right there at least i feel like are a little bit of a stretch to take at 25. yeah and the last one picked was andrew booth so so if andrew booth were on the board you would take him yeah, probably. Yeah. And again, I still think, I mean, come draft day, I would still say personally that they should just trade up. We'll see if they end up doing that. All right, so we're going running back here. And Tyler, you said Brees Hall. Um, Nate, Mike, do you agree with that? No, I said, yeah. I personally am higher on Kenneth Walker just for like our system. But Brees Hall is supposed to be the better prospect is what I've heard and watched videos on. So. I think Kenneth Walker is the better runner. I think he's the better overall. I think he's the best running back in this draft, if I'm being honest. So I agree. I'd go with Kenneth, if anything. I mean, I, I like Kenneth. I do like Kenneth Walker more, but the Bills do use the running back that can catch passes. I mean, if you look at free agency, you know, we wanted JD McKissick until he backed out of the deal. So, and he's more of a pass catching running back than a traditional running back. So, I mean, anything's possible though. So, so Kenneth Walker, is that right? I, I feel like it's more likely that they would go with Brees, but personally, I would pick Kenneth. And you know, okay, just to put my two cents in here, I do like Kenneth Walker as well, because at his Wake Forest days, he he did he did show the ability to catch. You know, at Michigan State, it, it was more of a it was more of a pound the rock type system, and there he showed he can be a three down back, which I think is invaluable in this league. All right, so Kenneth Walker, welcome to Buffalo. <sighs> All right, so while we're doing this, the running back room as is with Kenneth Walker is going to look like presumably starting Kenneth Walker, right? I yeah. would hope so. Yeah, so you've got Kenneth Walker, Motor Singletary, and Zach Moss. Honestly, looking from the outside in, that looks like a pretty good running back room. But as Bills fans, as guys that watch the team week to week, what would y'all think about that room? Well, and then there's Duke Johnson as well. They got in free agency. I feel like he's definitely more of a pass catching guy. I feel like, I mean, it's definitely not a bad, it's a running back room. I feel like you could win a Super Bowl with. I think if we did draft running back at 25, which I hope would be Kenneth Walker, I think you would see Moss out the door. Last year, he's inactive one week. He's playing another week. He's fumbling one week. He's too inconsistent. I don't, I think his time's coming to an end. All right. So we're at the second pick, and as y'all see above it, Roger McCreary got drafted by the Cowboys. That, Mike, you were pretty high on him. So, and Kyler Gordon. And, oh, and Kyler Gordon. This is the risk you guys run with that. But let's see what they got at the corner position now. 
Cam Taylor Britt's a pretty solid corner. And some like Tariq Wallen, you know, you're gonna take a chance on him. And I mean, if there's if there's a regime to do it, it would be uh, McDermott. When McDermott was in Carolina, he uh, took James Bradbury. We know how good of a player he is now. And he started day one and he went to Samford University or something like that. So to bring in a guy from like a college like that and start an NFL, he was taken in the second round, started day one, and he's a solid corner. I mean, in Buffalo, they take Dane Jackson in the seventh round, and then you have uh, Levi Wallace, who went undrafted. And both guys, I mean, they're no number one corners, but for best pieces, be number twos and threes and whatever. I mean, they're solid corners. So something I wanted to say, that uh, Memphis guard right there, Dylan, uh, Dylan Parham. That, but yeah, he's a pretty good. I've I've heard a lot of good things about him too. If they don't go guard first round, I feel like that's not a bad pick either. I do I do still think. I mean, corner definitely is our number one need, but uh, I feel like even right there, like I don't know, is the talent really that much like different? I don't I, I don't know. I feel like it's. I still think you're stretching even drafting there. Like those corners aren't anything crazy. I don't feel like. So I I would personally probably go with him. All right, we got three different positions to go from interior off, offensive line, corner, and wide receiver. Um, do do any of you have any any opinions on those three? And if we're in this position, who we should narrow it down to? I'd say I don't know about you guys. I feel like the wide receiver class is pretty deep this year. It is something they should address in the draft. I feel like, but I do think like round three, I still think you could get a decent wide out. I agree. And then for my take for taking corner in the second round, I mean, after Booth was taken at 20 and whatever, as we, t- we took a running back here to together. And I just think if you can not get those top five guys at 25, then it's definitely worth waiting to get a corner in the second round. And I still think, I mean, even like right here, like Roger got picked right above. I mean, I would hope like on draft day, if he's dropping like that at pick 57, we don't even like we try trading up just to get him. Like I would hope, but. Roger McCreary is undeniably a dog. Like in in college, when he was facing Bama, when I saw him, he was was just locking down Mechie and all that. The only downside about him is like his arms are allegedly too short. I'm gonna narrow it down right here. Cam Taylor Britt or Dylan Parham? I was gonna say if, if, you get Kenneth Malker in the first round. You should probably get a guard to help with that, with the run game. And I'd probably go with what uh, Tyler said, Dylan Parham. We're going guard in the second round with Dylan Parham. Welcome to Bills Mafia. I mean, and another reason for that pick would be is we just signed Roger Saffold, but you know, he's getting up there in age and I we only signed him to like a, what, a one year deal or something like that. I mean, it would be worth it getting a future pick that can sit behind and, and learn from someone like that. And even and, injuries, too. I mean, like you said, he is getting up there in age. So, I mean, if he f- drops down, I mean, we don't want to have like the same situation we had this season where we just got guys rotating in and out and no one really sticks or anything. And I'll, I'll tell you from experience as a Titans fan, Saffold, Seth, he can get injured and your quarterback can take a beating if he's not in there. Yeah, I, I commend y'all for, for taking him and like see, seeing that you have Josh Allen. All right, third round. Arson Strong, easy. <laughs> easy. Oh. <laughs> He'll be in the future, right? <laughs> yeah, look at this guy. I'm going to start off with Nate. Third round, we've selected a halfback and a guard. Who are we going with now in the third round with third round talent? Check the corner position because obviously it's a big need. Obviously, it's a little too early, but I, Kobe Bryant, you probably have to wait for that. So honestly, I'd go to the wide out. I, I think we need some speed. I know Danny Gray, he's got some speed. Kyle Phillips, he's got speed as well. Just maybe just someone to stretch the field a little bit. That's Justin Ross is solid too from Clemson. That's who I, oh. Justin Ross was who I had at my third, the third pick. Solid. He can go up and get the ball. I mean, we saw like, that in the college football playoff, so. And, well, one more position, kind of underrated. I would look at the linebacker position real quick, too. With Tremaine, the questions around Tremaine Edmonds, could always get another linebacker, sit a year to learn. Micah McFadden, Indiana, solid linebacker. Jack Sanborn as well. Obviously, you'd probably wait a little bit for that, but the questions about Edmonds, it's something you got to think about it. You know what I mean? But if this were me, I would probably 
either I'd probably go wide out right here. I I definitely would go wide out here too. I think I like I said I picked Justin Ross, but at the same time, I mean speed definitely. I mean that's the way the league is now is speed. So like you said, Nate, Danny Gray, dude's got burners. So I wouldn't mind that pick. Like I said, I I picked Justin Ross in the in my draft. All right, let's go to tight end here, Kevin. This is one of my surprise picks. Ooh. All right, I'm thinking a few years down the road here. Oh, all right. So Bills just picked up Ed Oliver's fifth year option, and we're going to have to pay him at some point. We're also going to have to pay Dawson Knox at some point. And there's questions on whether if we're going to pay Tremaine Edmonds or Jordan Poyer. And this is going to tie up a lot of money for the Bills. And even, you know, you guys just took um, a wide out here too. So we might even lose uh, Gabe Davis. There's a lot of money that that's not going to be able to be shared here a few years down the road. And so I'm thinking tight end because we might lose Dawson Ox or something. So I'm going to go with Jelani Woods here. And just, just to drop in during the NFL combine, Jelani Woods was one of the guys that stood out to me. I mean, just going to his measure, six, seven, two seventy. I didn't realize he was that big. He's he, a he made a career man. as a t- blocking tight end, but he is a receiver. He's a natural receiver too. If I had a vote and a half, it would be for Jelani Woods. Um, so we're at a bit of a roadblock. Two of us watch Lonnie, and then we, we've got some speedsters down here in Kyle Phillips and Danny Gray. Just to put my two cents out there, Khalil Shakir is a stud. I think he's a second round talent, but who are we thinking as a collective? I feel like neither position is necessarily a need. I just feel like it's more so like getting depth and to help out the position. So like Mike said, I didn't even think about tight end, honestly. I wouldn't even mind. I wouldn't mind that pick at all. With this window, I think we're trying to win now more. Because, I mean, you got O.J. Howard signed a deal. So you got Knox, Howard. It, would Jelani really play? That's the question. You know what I mean? That like, is- honestly, I, I agree with 100%. But if he's not going to see the field, is it really a point to get him this early? I see what you mean. But, I mean, say if we lose O.J. Howard after this year, you know, who's going to be our number two tight end? Uh, you know, and I feel like the Buffalo Bills are going to run more 12 personnel this year. All right. Who's budging? <laughs> if I'll, I'll, bo- I'll go either way, honestly. As much as I love Jelani Woods as a prospect, I think there is a more ne- immediate need for a wide receiver, especially if one goes down like Gabe Davis or McKenzie. I mean, and don't forget, I mean, they did pick up Crowder. I mean, he's not like a huge game changer by any means, but I mean, it definitely helps out the position a lot. I do agree kind of with what Nate said, though, that would if we got a tight end like Woods, would he even really see the field? And we know how McDermott is about rookies. Barely plays them. If they're healthy, healthy scratches almost every week. So if you get a guy that can stretch the field, open it up for Diggs and Gabe, I think that would be better off. But I, I do agree with the tight end 100 percent, though. Do you know who is faster between the two? Is it Danny Gray? Is he faster? It's Danny Gray. 4.3, 40 yard. I mean, can't teach that. Danny Gray, welcome to Buffalo. All right, so with that, the wide receiver room, break it down for us, anybody who, who needs it right now. So, I mean, obviously, Diggs, one of the best wide outs in the league. Uh, Gabe Davis should have been playing more last year, in my opinion. They didn't really let him shine until towards the end of the season playoffs. Obviously, we saw what he did against the Chiefs. I feel like those two alone, I mean, you already have a great wide receiver room. Then you add Danny Gray in there to, you know, spread the field. I feel like it helps both of them, honestly. You also got you also got your vets, Isaiah McKenzie. You got Jameson Crowder. Just guys that can teach Gray. Slot guys that can teach him how to play the slot, how to stretch the field. So I think it's it's a solid pickup. I, I, I personally think McKenzie should be playing more this year in the offense. I feel like he was kind of just a jet sweep kind of guy. But there were a couple games this season where they like they threw him the rock, they let him go to work, and I feel like he did a really good job. One of the best wide receiver rooms in the league. Simple as that, Kevin. Simple as that. And now that we're on to day three, round four, we've we've drafted halfback, guard, and wide receiver. We're going full offense here. Before before we even get to the pick, what are you guys looking for in terms of a day three prospect? Well, we haven't taken a corner yet in this draft, so we're definitely taking a corner here. But yeah, I, w- I would agree. Well, actually, I w- you would have to look at them first. Let's see what they're looking like. Let me let me ask you this: if you if you're going for a wide receiver in the fourth round, are you at this position expecting the guy to start, 
Well, with the corner situation right now with Trey White not possibly not being back till October, he's probably going to have to be NFL ready. Getting a guy like Joshua Williams, who's six three, he could match up with guys his size, you know what I mean? So and depending on the early season schedule, it could, you know, bode well for him if we did pick him up. So Yeah, I would agree. They gotta like like Nate said, if Trey White, depending on how he is progressing with his injury and rehabilitation and all that they're definitely gonna have to be ready to play it can't really i feel like be a project i mean you don't want to destroy the kids confidence throwing them in there you know having them go up against all these nfl elite wide receivers his first year like first couple games going up against and i obviously with how stacked the afc is right now like i'm looking at josh job right here he might not have the biggest measurables and he's he's a little old but i think playing at alabama and playing against wide receivers that are NFL ready, he I can make the argument that he's a little more of that guy. I'd say Josh Job's probably ready more than Joshua Williams just because Bama, I mean, Bama corners, Bama wideouts, they're always great. So I'd definitely probably go with the Bama guy. Josh Thompson had a 4440, 11th fastest among the corners. That's pretty solid for a corner, especially this late. I mean, we were looking at Tariq Wool, and I mean, I think he he's the number one corner for speed and forty times. So, and that's the thing. A lot of I think a lot of people have been like disregarding now is that we play the Dolphins twice a year, and they have Waddle and they have Hill, two of the fastest guys in the league. And so, like that was one reason why we lost to the to the Chiefs in that divisional round is because we didn't have corners who really they weren't athletic enough and they weren't fast enough to keep up with that the whole game and it came when it came down to the wire you know it's what cost us the game well i'm liking josh thompson here because I, I was reading up on him and it said he did he did show up a little bit at the senior bowl and at the combine stock is a little low but do you take corners back to back do we really have that many other positions that we like need where we could get josh now and then later on get thompson as well yeah i, I feel i could see the bills taking uh repeating what they did last year and doubling up on position all right so who are we going with here i think josh joe but yeah i would go on top. and then try to get thompson maybe the next round or the round after that if he's still there it's about the josh is here but i guess let's go with josh Job and uh try to get thompson later here there's joshua williams still on the board there he's still there Cornerback, we're going back to back. What are we thinking? We get, Nate, I, I know you mentioned Sean Jolly. Um, we talked about Joshua Williams and Josh Thompson's still there. I got a, a whole different route here. Um, Michael McFadden, Jack Sanborn. I think with Edmonds, the question's in the air. I, I still think you draft the linebacker in this draft. That was the exact pick I had in my uh, mock draft, brother, so. <laughs> And Mike, I'm sorry to say it, but Mike McFadden's a stud. I mean, I agree. I had uh, another surprise pick I had for the Bills was linebacker. I was thinking maybe earlier if they did go with it and if they did not go early in the draft with linebacker, I was thinking around this time about round four to five would be the perfect time to snag a linebacker. So I do agree with this pick here with Michael McFadden. Okay. Mike McFadden, it is. All right, sixth round, corners. All of our guys are still here. Who are we taking? We were talking about this could be a more of a project pick, correct? Because that's why we took Josh from Alabama. Joshua Williams, he's what we said, 6'3". I mean, if he's there and you're going to do a project, I feel like that'd be a good one. I also still do like Thompson. I would kind of lean towards Thompson. I, I do like Joshua Williams. I feel like either of those two would be a great pick. We're going with Thompson. Pull up on the corner. Going with Thompson. All right. I'm thinking punter. I was yeah. going to say the same thing. San Diego State, bring him home. Please and thank you. He, it's hard not to fall in love with Matt Areza. I mean, he's got a booming leg. And, I mean, he can just kick that thing about 100 yards if he wanted to. Bass and Areza for the next 10-plus years in Buffalo. <clears throat> Brian yeah. Lindell, Brian Mormon 2.0. All right, so this last pick, who are, who, who are y'all looking at here? If I was Buffalo... I would go uh, defensive interior, D tackle. If I if I were picking, I would probably go with a D tackle because I mean, Daquan Jones, 
he's on the older side. So, like, how many years are we really going to get from him? With you on that, I was definitely thinking either interior D-line or, or edge. You can't teach size. So, I'm going to pick him right away. So the Bills, we got an <laughs> we got a D plus. Wow. From a non-Bills perspective, here's what I'll say. I don't like drafting a halfback in the first round. I think that is a cardinal rule that you don't draft a running back in the first round because of their injury probability. Um, I like Parnum more than PFF does here. And McFadden. I don't know why he's a C plus. So I would give you guys on the top level. I'm not so sure, but I like how you filled the roles. If I can just say, I agree with you. Uh, usually I wouldn't pick a halfback, but I would hope they trade up for a top tier corner. That would be my perfect draft. But at the time of the draft where we are, I feel like the corner is a bit of a stretch and I still, I believe halfbacks a very big problem and an issue. So I usually am against going halfback first round, but I would definitely, I mean, it is late first round too as well. I mean, an F grade is ridiculous in my opinion. Look at Najee. He went into a terrible offense and he, we know how he did. So I do like the power and pick a lot. He can play multiple positions. That's what the Bills like. So Josh Joe, Bama, I mean, goes against the best talent every, you know, his whole career. So that's a solid pick. McFadden, dog from Indiana. Josh Thompson, speed. He's probably more of our project, I would imagine, but Matt Areza, San Diego State. We need a punter. That's the bottom line. I mean, like Tyler said earlier. And then Noah Ellis, big body from Idaho. I mean, can't go wrong with that. I just, like I said, like Nate just said, it's a solid draft all around here. To argue against your point of taking the running back in the first round, Kevin, I mean, would anyone really be pooping on the Colts if they took Jonathan Taylor in the first round? If you take the right running back in the first round, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't think people would be really trying to argue against it. You know what I mean? Saquon going, he went, what, like three, oh. I think it was? Like two, was it? Okay. So that's like, and then we saw that turned out. So, I mean, that's a that's a top pick. So, but I mean, when you get to the end of the first round, if you're just trying to fill a need, I feel like it's not really an issue like it is here. Yeah, uh, PFF hates these guys, every single one of them. I hope you guys don't. I hope introducing y'all to these guys was was great, was lovely. Um, if you agree or disagree with the grading that they gave us, um, comment below. If you like or dislike any of the picks, comment below. And uh, any last words from y'all? No, it was uh, it was an honor to be here, Kevin. Thanks for having us. Always an honor, Kev. Yeah, thanks for inviting us, Kevin. Have a good time, and uh, as always, go Bills. Go Bills, and we'll see y'all later. <laughs>